Well, we're just hours away from counting in Delhi's crucial assembly election, a poll that has been so bitterly contested by the key players. The exit polls say it will be Panchsal Kejriwal, but could the BJP still spring a surprise? Kiran Bedi today said that irrespective of the results, she's here to stay in politics, while the Congress seems to have already conceded defeat. Ajay Markan telling NDTV that he will be responsible if the party loses. So what really is at stake for the key parties? Will this result have a bearing on the Modi government at the centre? Does it reflect on how the centre has performed till now? What does it do to the Congress and its reluctant leader Rahul Gandhi? And can a win for AAP boost its prospects in other states? Tavleen Singh joins us in this segment tonight uh, and we'll be joined by Professor Yogendra Yadav very shortly. Tavleen, let me take this to you first. If you were to take a look at the BJP first, is this, you believe, a reflection of the Modi government at the centre or not? You already heard leaders like Venkaya Naidu coming out and saying, no, no, it's not a referendum on the PM. But the fact is, it was Mr. Modi's pictures on every poster. It was Mr. Modi's voice on every radio jingle. You had senior ministers, Mr. Modi himself, out there in full force in the campaign. Will this, uh, if they lose, be a dent on them as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, there is a great feeling in, um, across the country that I pick up of disappointment. The, the government doesn't seem to be moving fast enough on economic reforms. It doesn't seem to be moving fast enough to improve education. The social sector is totally neglected. It's too much as if they've just, don't take it badly, right? it's just too much as if they've just settled into the mold, as I wrote in my column, that the Congress left behind and was a very bad mold, right? So there is disappointment, and it'll get reflected in this thing. I'd be very surprised if the BJP pulled off a victory. So you don't, uh, you don't think that they, they, they still have a shot? Because I, I don't always believe the polls, but... Nor do I. And we but know it's that just based on what you hear on the ground. It's also. what I, you know, I mean, I've been sort of coming in and out of Delhi for the past uh, three weeks. And uh, from the juggies to the uh, drawing rooms, what I hear is a sense of disappointment because people expected Parivartan, if not Vikas, okay? Vikas can take time, but there have to be some signs of change. You know, you've got to have an agenda that people are familiar with. It's, you can't get away. If you notice that the Prime Minister, when he was campaigning, uh, t talked only of the Jandhan Yojana as an achievement. Uh, that's not good enough. Okay, so that Bhatia, if you could quickly weigh in on this as well, uh, wh what's the view there from Mumbai as you as you see this uh, election play out in the national capital? What was interesting is today's Chanakya, uh, who got the Lok Sabha election bang on uh, in, in, in in his exit poll predictions, he's given quite a majority to up and has also given an interesting breakup of how uh, how people have uh, apparently voted, whether it's uh, along you know religious lines, caste lines, and so on. And when you look at the up. Uh, it, it seems that they've got support across caste, class, and you know a lot of younger people also voting for them as well. How do you read that, Siddharth Bhatia? You know, um, I think Tamlin used the phrase "jhuki jhopdis" and drawing rooms. I'll add another quotient to that, another factor, and that's boardrooms. And uh, I'm sure she can also illustrate this. But the fact of the matter is that there is a sense that things have not happened and a sense of direction has not been provided. Yes, there have been grandiose announcements, yes, there have been plans, yes, there have been even schemes, but nothing seems to be changing and there is some kind of uh, disappointment, obviously. Now, you come to a state election of Delhi, which is really speaking nothing more than, <coughs> essentially nothing more than a mayor, mayoral election and a municipality election, the Prime Minister weighs in, his photographs are all over the papers, he makes speeches, he attacks the opposition and the opposition leader. <clears throat> uh, what is that if not, a, if not, even if you don't want to use a strong word like referendum, but it's certainly a reflection on whether, uh, what the disappointments or expectations of the BJP are among people who gave it so many votes last time, the percentage could have got them 60 seats. And no one is predicting 60 seats for the BJP. So yes, there is a sense of uh, dissatisfaction. We'll talk about you know, how this is going to play out later. But all I can say is that a small election has become a chink in the armor for a national, victorious, triumphant party like the BJP. A small election. Let me take that to Mr. I find that extremely ironical. 
so I'll take that to Mr. GVL Rao. That uh, Mr. GVL Rao, I mean, I know you're not going to sit here and say yes. It doesn't look like we're going to win tomorrow. I'm not saying that either. I still think that until the final results are out, you never know what's going to happen. But would you concede? that there were some mistakes or uh, that were made during the campaign whether it was a very negative campaign that was run by the bjp uh, or you know and and also that you staked so much on it whether it was the pm himself campaigning so much your top ministers it was the entire cabinet versus kejriwal at one point did you stake too much on this one election by making such a big deal out of it um i think uh, uh, an analysis of uh, how well we have done in this election I think it will have to be reserved for uh, uh, af day after tomorrow because it can't really, we can't pre prematurely discuss issues until we know how people have voted or how people have spoken. Uh, but as far as I think the, the, the despondency that uh, I have heard from experts on this panel is certainly not what one experiences on the ground. I think on the ground, the people are extremely satisfied. I am using the word extremely satisfied with the way in this the government has gone on for the last 8-9 months, how the governance has been put back on tracks and for the results people are certainly willing to give a lot more time because employment and issues like that can't really be delivered. So the results will a be a reflection on months. the centre's performance? You are saying the results will be a reflection on Mr. Modi's performance at the centre? No. No, but if no, they're happy, see, then why, never why, before, why not? Never before. No, just, no, no, I'm only this. I'll, I'll tell you. I, I was making this comment because the experts before me made certain observations. I'm only giving my perspective on this. Okay, now, as far as these elections are concerned, these are local elections where we have, we have tried to really maximize our appeal based on our leadership. There is no doubt about it. And we would do that in every election. But the reality is, Delhi election. Uh, as, uh, as, as possibly Mr. Siddharth said, is largely a local election and it will be influenced by a lot of local factors also. No, but then so why have the PM campaign? Why put, if it's a local election, then why was Mr. Modi's uh, face on every newspaper, every poster, every radio jingle? You know, it, it was huge. Kiran Bedi was a little square. You know what I mean? If it's a local election, no, I, 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 then it yeah, should have yeah, been but, just about Kiran no, Bedi. You compare, one important point, one, I think. One, yeah, one second. But you one compare second. it with all other elections. You compare it with all other elections in the recent, in the last seven, eight months. I think Mr. Modi addressed eight rallies in Jammu and Kashmir, 11 to 12 rallies in Jharkhand, uh, uh, Jharkhand and he has addressed nearly 25 rallies in Maharashtra. In Delhi, he addressed only four meetings. So relatively, his exposure to Delhi was much it's less. Smaller but place. increasingly, you five, see, the, the point to be understood is local issues will continue to matter. You see, we could not we could not make a difference in Valley. So why did we not win seats in the Kashmir Valley? So so does one has to look at the context. One also has to look at the local political factors. It cannot be only one leader winning every state for you. But he certainly be. He has certainly been a very positive factor for the BJP. Well, I, so I can just see pictures right now. Let's, let's wait and see tomorrow. You know, I, you know, but the point is that you have been campaigning in Mr. Modi's name and the performance of his government as well. I mean, the radio jingles, which, you know, were there on every morning when I drove to work, when you could hear, you know, that, that it, 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 you know, Chalo Chale Modi ke saath, and it was all about, you know, the, the Modi yes. government. So, therefore, let me ask Mr. Yogendra Yadav. Mr. Yadav, uh, I'm sure you must be confident this evening but is all is there also a danger in the ARP camp of some overconfidence I mean you're also a cephologist you know how this works what do you think the margin of error could be in these exit polls uh, Mr. Nasima Rao makes I think a couple of very fair points we cannot get into a post-mortem mode unless we have the results in the first place uh, we have only exit poll forecasts yes exit polls have gone off the track in the past uh, the tendency has been for them to underestimate a party like the Ahmadmi party. Um, and usually when you have a large number of polls all pointing in the same direction, then the question is generally of the margin rather than that, that of the direction. Um, yes, they can go off as well. My own estimate for whatever it's worth, and I say so in full realization that uh, it will make not an iota of difference to the results. My own sense from reading the polls is that every, almost every one of them has underestimated Ahmadmi party, perhaps for good reasons, uh, because pollsters tend to be cautious, they tend to be, 
they tend not to go overboard. Uh, but I think they have underestimated Amadmi Party for two reasons, for in two ways. One, looking at and knowing something about the industry, I know that almost every one of them has underreported the lead that their own survey showed for Amadmi Party. Uh, I'm not saying this is a there's something uh, unprofessional here. Uh, after all, estimates are adjusted, but they have been adjusted to the lower side for Amadmi Party. Second. Almost every one of them has been conservative in translating votes into seats. If Ahmadni Party has something like six to eight percent uh, percent lead, as all the polls have pointed out, it should straight away translate into something like fifty seats. I'm sure Mr. Nasima Rao there would agree with me that if the lead for one party in a straight bipolar contest is something like six to eight percent, then the leading party, whichever that party is, would get something like two thirds majority straight away. So that's what but I Mr. Yadav, let me ask you because I, I'm trying to reflect on, on, on what these results could mean for each party. And if the AAP does indeed walk away with a victory tomorrow, uh, in terms of, of the impact in other states, do you see then a greater role for the AAP, say in Punjab, possibly uh, you know, venture into Bihar? Do you, do you see your party doing that slowly uh, uh, and, and venturing into these other states? Uh, I think uh, the point that uh, Mr. Gautam Bhat, uh, Siddharth Bhatia made earlier uh, is worth keeping in mind. These are and were local elections and the result would have been very limited if the Prime Minister and the BJP had not thrown it all its prestige, all its resources, all its organizational might into winning this election. So in a sense they have made it bigger than it actually is. And clearly, uh, if we may win, and if we win big, as is, uh, seems to be the case, then its reverberations would be felt uh, throughout the country. The simple conclusion would be, I think two broad conclusions would follow if we win the kind of win we think we will. One, a juggernaut has been halted. Two, hope has been rekindled. Now, how do we carry that forward is a different matter. I would be very cautious because you see last time what happened was that we scored a victory. Uh, there was a lot of hype around what we did and uh, in Maybe some overconfidence. many ways that hype actually damaged us. Yeah, yeah uh, you, you admit so that. So I would rather not uh, get into that hype. Uh, we are still a very small party outside Delhi and we have to contend with bigger ones but I think in the country right now, you have a government party, but you don't have an opposition. The oppositional space is a vacuum right now. No, you know, and, and that's, exactly, an that's exactly why I want to Amani turn my party attention to, to the used. Congress. Because the Congress party, Mr. Rashmika, let's talk about you guys. You know, mostly this battle has been about the AAP and, and the BJP and the exit polls, and you yourself were candid about that, are not very flattering about what's going to happen to the Congress. Where does the Congress party go from here? I mean, you know. Is there, are there going to be some serious questions within the party finally after all these months that something has to change and it has to change quickly? Nidhi, I think there's two parts to uh, two parts uh, in my answer. One of course is that serious questions, serious issues, serious introspection is taking place. But I think the Delhi results, coming back to the Delhi results, I think this is a continuation of what happened in 2013. And the Delhiites thought that Mr. Kejriwal got a raw deal and Mr. Kejriwal should be given another chance. And AAP was smart and good enough to get their organization together and instead of, have, instead of showing their national ambitions so quickly, they, they concentrated, concentrated on Delhi very much. They got, they got volunteers from all over the country. The Panna Pramukhs of the RSS didn't work. You just talked about the BJP workers. The BJP really doesn't have an organization. It's the, it's the RSS which gives that. Gives that sense. The question should really be asked to the BJP. While the Congress is certainly there, BJP is the ruling party. A party that got 60 seats in the last referendum of the people. 60 assemblies, they won in the six, in 60 assembly segments out of 70. Let's talk about the Congress though. Yeah, no, no, no. But the important point is for the last four years. You're not talking about the Congress at all, I am, sir. I, I'll I, tell you why I'm not talking BJP. about the Congress. Yeah, there's I, no point. You know, no, no, the no, no. BJP because we what, know has this problem. What are your because, problems? Because for the last four years, when the UPA was in power, this entire debate and discourse, political discourse, was around UPA which was ruling the country. 